Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show. Brought to you by the Kitco Cafe and Market. He's Moan in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic in downtown Pittsburgh. And Moan, that was an authentic, t- toothy smile you just offered. <laughs> it was, man. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got to show the pearlies, man. It's just let it go be on display right there. You know, plus, it gets you going. A smile from Moan today gets you going. I- Maybe this my wife true. thinks that too, huh? I have this to ask is her. True. That's <laughs> true. I like that. I like that actually. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. You've you've seen me come on here a lot of times in this really bad mood, <laughs> or something has me rattled, or it's the business, or something else, yeah. or whatever. Or then, and I come on, and I see there's Mo. Ah, everything's okay. <laughs> you, hey, know? you know what? How Most do you of the- do that? Man, DK, that's just me, man. I'm a second child, you know, middle child too, and we're mostly. We try to be pleasers almost too much at times, DK, to mm. where acceptance is always big. I've kind of looked this stuff up, and, and it's acceptance is always big, trying to control the mood all the time. That's me, man. And I've also gotten to a point, I've always kind of been this way. Why Why be mad, man? God, it bothers me when people are down. So I'm always that, hey, let's get up out of this funk. Well, that leads us perfectly into today's subject, <laughs> which is Chris Boswell. Yeah veteran place kicker of your Pittsburgh Steelers and a not really great year that he had that it seems like not all that many people even talked about as it was happening. But the fact of the matter is, if you go back over uh, his season and accounting for the fact that, remember, he missed yeah, yeah the five games with the groin injury and you know, be a place kicker with a groin injury. And he ended up just uh, making 71.4% of his kicks. Now, the, maybe the reason that we didn't talk about that too much is that he was golden from 50-plus. Yeah. Seven out of nine, including a 59-yarder that tied a career high. Most of his misses, Moan, came between 40 and 49 yards. And what I want to ask you today, I'm going to ask you to analyze a kicker's performance or a kicker's mindset or whatever else. Yeah. I want to ask you, because I, I see how these guys are. Mm-hmm. I mean, and when I say that, I'm talking about the three specialists, yep. kicker, punter, long snapper. They live in their own little world. They sit in their own corner of the locker room. Do you ever, did, did you interact? Did you, did you go over and say, Hey, Hey boss, we got you, man. Or, or anything. <laughs> Do you just not talk to the kicker? That's, that's a great question, man. Like for the most part, kickers are usually pretty cool. Pretty quirky guys, in-depth guys a little bit too. I mean, and I say this, they're a lot like offensive linemen in a lot of different ways. Uh, nobody really understands them. Everybody think they can do their job, and everybody think their job is easy. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, just stand in front of the guy. That's what they tell us offensive. Just block the man in front of you. No, <laughs> it, it is, it's a lot more to it than that, man. And I think when you're looking at a position like OL and you're looking at a position like kicker, like it really is mental. It's so mental. You you live in a world where the <laughs> the highs are supposed to just be normal, meaning blocking an all-pro, all-world guy for an offensive lineman, uh, that's a defensive lineman, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Golly. Didn't have your name called. Therefore, <laughs> it, it was a good game. Exactly. And for kickers, it's supposed to be the exact same thing because, and I'll say this too, internally, they're judged by their teammates uh, probably worse than anybody. Because you, there's no physicality in what they do other than when they got to get dirty on kickoff or kickoff return. I which mean, nobody kickoff, wants them to do. Which nobody, nobody wants them to do. Exactly. The last kicker who did that for the Steelers, it was up in Canton, yeah. the Hall of Fame game, and he was scolded up, down, and sideways for it. That's what I was going to say. He heard from it on that one, too. Um, but, but like, that's, they have no physicality in practice. They really don't practice a whole lot uh, as far as the kickers. Like the snappers would do like drills with the quarterback where they snap the ball and stuff like that. And But the guys that actually kick the ball, they have a bunch of leisure time. So when it comes time for them to do their job, oh, they're expected to be 100%. And I'll say especially on extra point and field goals. Like those right there, the 15-yard line and then those are supposed to be what we call automatic. Right, DK? And imagine no guys question. missing – from what even when it the, got moved back, even when oh it got moved gosh. back, didn't matter. PATs didn't ma- are automatic. Automatic. But then you go into the different world of it. Well, if I miss one, it's just saying, well, if I miss, miss a block up front, 
gosh, what am I supposed to do to correct this? Do I overcorrect this? And that's where kickers are like they're in their own world. They have to be mentally in tune to all things surrounding them and inside of them, too, because we saw that this past postseason with Dallas's kicker. This guy has been clutch for them for the most part of his career. And then he's missing. I'm just talking about the most simple kicks because nobody can really tell you how to overcorrect it other than coming up to you and say, man, you're just in your head. I know. But how do I get out of my head? Who's supposed to correct me? Like he doesn't kick like Boz doesn't kick like Janikowski. You see what I'm saying? But who is it? Who does this? That's that's what I'm asking here. Like, I'm trying to picture James Harrison going up to a kicker who misses a field goal and says, hey, man, it's good. We got you. You know what? For the most part, everybody does it. And it also depends on situationally and what okay. your reputation is, too. Like, most of the time, the OL on a miss, I would still go up to him like, hey, we got you. It's all good. Okay. Because they're so separated at times from the team that they have to know they're a part of it in bad moments. Like, we can give up a bad play or a DB can give up a bad play, but they know they've played 40 other plays on the field that's, that kind of covers for that one. Kickers don't have that. Everybody see them march out. So, for the most part, I've seen Cam be able to tell Boss, Boss, hey, all good. All to good. it when he was with to it. I'm all good, boss. We got you. Mm-hmm. I would all, hey, we're good. Be cool. Guys be internally ticked off. But this is the thing, DK, listeners. There's nobody else that can do what he do on game day. If I, I suck at my job, mm-hmm. there's usually a guy that can come in and tap me out like Mona. They ain't your day. Running uh, back, same. Even the quarterback. Hey. Even the quarterback. There is no other position like that other than the uh the 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 kicker position. Now Ben could come on and do a pooch punt. <laughs> We've seen that done. I tried. feel like this is my own personal hey moan segment, the whole Go thing ahead. here. So I just keep asking you questions. I've never asked anybody this. When the other coach calls the timeout to ice the kicker, does anybody talk to the kicker? Or you just leave him alone? Do you like oh, go up don't to him say just say nothing? Really? Nothing. See, I was kind of hoping that somebody would go in and just say, like, like make some oh, casual no. remark about the weather or something. Oh, no, because that just distracts them from what their concentration point has to be. Like, you legitimately leave them alone. The most you'll do, feel uh, like fist bump, tap them on the head real quick. Like, the dynamics of the way they operate, man, is is different. I don't even want to kind of, kind of say, like, it's psychotic or, you know, like, they're, they're, but you got to be in a really good spot to do those jobs. And this is the thing, too, DK. There's so many guys that are on the streets that could potentially do those jobs. And you got to deal with that. It's only 32 in the league. And there's so many college kickers. Yeah. But but it's true, though. I mean, you know, when you look at the Steelers this year, they brought in Nick Skiba. And and Skiba did okay. Yeah. Now, they didn't let him try a single kick that was longer than 40. (laughs) But, you know, know, whatever. That's just how that ended up. Working out here, I think it was uh, was it Matthew Wright was the other one? Yeah, Ma- Matthew Wright. Yeah, Matthew absolutely Wright was another was one. Another one. Um, he did a little bit more than Skiba did. Four out of five on kicks between forty and forty nine yards. Uh, Wright also had a fifty two yarder. So, yes, yeah, somebody else came in, quote unquote, off the street, and started doing that. Now, it's got to be at least a little bit different. You would think when it's Boz and he has signed. An NFL contract for yep. NFL money. Yep. He's not getting thrown out on the street. No, he's not, man. And what's so interesting about him, like even when a guy like him who has a really good ironclad reputation, mm-hmm. I, I, like you, you respect him. It's like, okay, he was due one. Like I remember watching Boss going through when he first got his first contract, just him like being in that funk and he really got put on IR that year. Like – see him come back from that and be as good as he was post that little situation he had. I'm texting him now. I'm trying to see if I can get him on DK at some point, because I need him to speak about himself in these type of situations, because I think it's very important, man, to kind of hear that aspect of it and how they're wired DK. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see. He's just not one of those guys I worry about. I just don't waste any time. I don't worry about him. You know, that's kind of the point I was hoping we would reach in this segment. It was like, yeah, all those numbers we just read and the injury. Nah, don't worry. I, don't worry about them at all, man. And I think that's okay to be in that position, too. When we come back, more football. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Sticking with a football slash Steelers theme. Vince Williams and the way things fell out with the Steelers is a subject unto itself. It's one that we covered at the time that it happened. But no one was more aware of his situation as it was unfolding than Vinny himself. Meaning he and Ryan Shazier and their constant talks and everything. And I think I've told you before, Mo, I would go over and I'd spend my Fridays with those guys and listen in on this stuff. Vinny knew that his type of linebacker was being phased out all across the league. It's a lot like the talk that you hear from nose tackles. Over yeah. the years. You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah, we got, well, we got Casey Hampton over there, but he might be the last one of those. Yeah. Uh, how can you imagine what that would be like? If you're, you're playing a position and you mm-hmm. just know this thing isn't even going to exist or that for reasons that have nothing to do with your own performance, that your coaches and everybody else values you less. Man, that, that's, it's got to be a rough spot, and I've seen dudes be in those positions too, mm-hmm. DK, to where, you know, <laughs> like it make you make changes. You know, like it really does. Uh, I don't care if it's like weight-wise, trying to be faster, mm-hmm. trying to be smarter, telling the young guy, hey, no, 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 I'm, I'm good on third down. I got it. I'll stay out here. Watch me do work. The, the day-to-day mental grind, like, I don't think people understand how much of a mental grind it is to kind of get to that point of surviving in the NFL. And no, you say you're either surviving or thriving. Like, you can do both, especially in a position like Vince or like a D-tackle, I mean, like a nose tackle or even fullback, right? Like this Oh, yeah. Thing. Fullback's a good one, yeah. And, heck, let's be honest, a prime position, a very prime position, DK. Let's talk about uh, running backs. You know what I'm saying? Like running backs is another one of those positions that you can get phased out after like year five, year six, you're about to start looking for your replacement. So yeah, it's kind of rough. You go back 15, 20 years, like Vince Williams is is an all pro type of guy. The guy that's going to make all the highlights when it comes down to hard nosed football in the NFL. Am I correct in saying that? Like Uh, there were times at peak Vinny. Oh my God. Was a very, very good football player. Yeah. And a lot of different things. But you know what? That's what he had to prove to actually get that shot, too, though. Like, his mm-hmm. practice stuff that he used to do, and I tell this story all the time, we went at it rough and practice. B- That's because- another category. Vinny in practice is another category oh entirely. Uh, Vinny in training camp, even th- that goes even on another category. Dude, like, seriously, like, I'm texting him. We just got confirmation. Vinny and I are going to record next week sometime, just so you know. And this is going to be – I'm going to ask him, why are you an animal? Why were you an animal on practice field instead, you know, and and in the game? But he had to do that to survive that position. Like, Vinny would say he wasn't the fastest guy. His combine time showed that he wasn't the tallest. He wasn't as agile as a guy like like Shazier. But Mm -hmm. Shazier would be one of the first ones to tell you, Vince is the dog of our defense, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you needed out of Vinny to kind of meet the finesse of him and Shazier's pairing that they had together. It was a beautiful situation to watch those two kind of create that, 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 what do you want to call it? Shake and bake up the middle, DK? Yeah, yeah. And and that's what I kind of want Vinny to be able to elaborate on a little bit more. Like that position of hard nose, Ray Lewis, um, um, those oh, type of there's guys. There's a long list of them in Pittsburgh history. Oh, when you get to the LeVon Kirkland is LeVon the guy that jumps Kirkland. out. Now, LeVon could go sideline to sideline. He was a physical freak. But LeVon also was your Hardy Nickerson guy that you would funnel all yeah. the tackles to. And, you know, that's what... Vinny at his best was. Vinny would be oh that guy who could get you, you know, 150, whatever it is, tackles just by having everybody funnel in toward him. And just, we just, it's funny that with Shea yeah. in particular, oh remember when the Steelers drafted him and he walks into the locker room and you're thinking, <laughs> wait, that's a what? <laughs> that, dude. That, is a, that dude, is it a linebacker, an inside linebacker? Yeah. Get out of here. That's a safety. He, he, he's everything about Shea when he walked in yeah. was a safety. But the Steelers were ahead of their time. He was ahead of his time yes. at Ohio State and then into the NFL. Yeah, no doubt about it. And to watch guys kind of adjust their roles to how to operate around him. And then, honestly, Vinny being thrust in the position after Shazier was hurt to kind of take over a lot of that role, too. 
I'm sure the stress factor of it, although he may admit it now in retirement, <laughs> even though that side of it is is um not talked about enough and the good job that he actually did, like Vinny is owed their respect and and just the appreciation of how he played the game. And it was also this too for guys that needed that guidance. He showed you what it took to survive in the NFL and especially inside of a Pittsburgh Steelers locker room. If you couldn't be a better athlete than Vince Williams or play as physical as he could, you didn't deserve a spot on the roster at all. My favorite Vinny moment still happened off the field. (laughs) It's that one. We've talked about this one, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna refresh everybody else's memory Please. here. It's where he was watching from the other side of the room. Zach Banner, just oh putting on a show, you know, being I'm- really loud and whatever else. And Vinny yells out. Room's full of reporters, by the way. He just couldn't care less, right? Nope. Okay. I'm standing over there with him. And Vinny yells out. You know, you got that big voice. You got that big hair. You better be backing that up. Right in front of everybody. And Zach, he he turned flush. Okay. In front of everyone. And it's, you talk about whatever, the dog in him or whatever. That's stuff you don't see. People hear that stuff and they think, oh, yeah, he was an aggressive tackler and he once mouthed off with so-and-so from the Bengals. No, 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 no. no. That happens in-house. That happens in-house. Yes, and and I'm hoping that's still there in some type of capacity because that's the thing about it. Like, And I'll even throw myself in there a little bit. Guys like myself, I'm going to try to reel off some guys. Vince, James Harrison, Willie Colon would be another one. Uh, heck, even Max Starks, Javon Hargraves, right? Although he's kind of turned into a guy. Um, there, there's a list of dudes, man, that appreciate uh, Mike Hilton, mm. Cam Sutton, another one. Th- there's a list of guys in the NFL that got to where they are because they worked harder than everybody else. And then you see people with just immaculate talent just walking. It was the same way we talked about Martavis, just jump up from the free throw line and dunk a ball with two hands, <laughs> right? That's a we, good way to describe him, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Or a guy that just, I know he worked for it, but like Ben, that naturally just knows how to win. You know what I'm saying? Like you meet those dudes or a, a, a speed and strength like Marquise that's able to get up and down the field and you'd be like, man, where did you find one of those? Oh, he got a twin brother. You know what I'm saying? Like it's those types of dudes you see and even Antonio. Antonio had to work and push and grind for it and have to get out of his way Six some. Six rounder, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when yeah. you see guys that have that walk around, just throw on some basketball shoes and then pick up a golf set, golf club set and <laughs> play tennis like none other, and they don't take advantage of it, That's, it makes you yeah, feel a certain it, type it, of it's, way. It's, it's, oh, I would imagine it takes you off. Uh, oh, the, it takes the, you off. The counter to that? is when you see these blessed examples oh, yeah. of the guys who do have all that talent and all mm-hmm. those golf clubs and everything else and still have that Vinny in them. Yeah. And I'm talking about go back to the season opener in Cincinnati and Minka Fitzpatrick yeah. showing all of his voluminous skill yeah. and yet wanting to eat all of them for dinner. Okay, I have not seen, and I told him after that game, I have not seen you like that. He said, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he he's trying to not say I hate those guys, <laughs> but while also acknowledging that he just flat out hates those guys. There are enough individual humans in those uniforms that he actually hates that it pushed him to some other level. And that, when you see that, that's when you're talking about dog and talent and everything else mixing. It is a beautiful... I'm looking forward to your discussion with Vinny. That's what I have to say. When we come back, the only segment that matters. That's a moment. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show and the only segment that matters, and that's brought to you always by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where three expert chefs fine-tune 
every sub, burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app so that they are crafted for what they refer to cleverly as craveability. Order your favorite entry at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. Today's entry comes from Maul, who says, Hey, Moan! I, I hear people discussing about maybe moving Dan Moore to guard. But with his later development, yeah. what if the Steelers instead move Chooks Okorafor over to that left side next to Dan at guard? Chooks is strong and athletic enough. He has experience at tackle, and maybe he can help Dan being hmm. next to him. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Moving. Hey, man, that is um, no. <laughs> exactly, DK. That is a no. And if you wanted to, Tooks will send you a pigeon. He will tell you N-O. He will say no in 50 million languages, which is still no. Uh, Tooks is way too established to be changing positions like that. Uh, no matter what you think about him or not, this guy's only started at right tackle. I've seen him practice at left and stuff like that, and he's better off as a right tackle. And it, I, I think he's okay with that. That, to me, makes the most sense when it comes down to how you build up this line, too. Like, that's that's one thing I had to I, – and I continue to tell you guys, like, check myself on when it comes down to um, trying to fix this OL. Like, they probably got to grow a little bit. Do I think they may challenge a guy or two this year as far as, you know, picking somebody in draft? I, I, I think so. I think it's fair to say it's okay for them to go in the draft and look for a guy or two. Like, this group is still young enough to where if you implemented a new guy, meaning don't shuffle anybody around, then I think you make this group stronger. Damn more to me, as, as you said, and we've talked about before, had a stronger ending to the season. The second half of the season was way stronger than anything he he did in the first half. That's for real. Uh, but I, I do look at Dotson's role and say, okay, what, what's going to happen there? I don't know what's going to happen there. I would expect them to potentially make a move or two, but moving Dan to guard, moving Tooks to the left, that would create so much more angst. And I even saw one when we saw the uh, James Daniels zero sacks post, Mm-hmm. It was actually Chook's page that I saw it on first. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you see where their relationship is, and that's where you build an OL is in those relationships and trust and appreciation of what one another has done. Yeah, I, I you know the first thing that makes me a little bit cringy about the concept is you're not moving Chooks anymore. Yeah. He's done. He's done. Yeah, he's, he's a right tackle. So the, the whole conversation can end right there. Um, while you were talking, I was trying to find the Nor- Nigerian word for no. <laughs> it's probably no. Well, the, the, no, the real the real catch is, and I knew this, in Nigeria there's like a zillion languages. Yeah. But I did find a language called Yoruba, or Yoruba speaking, or Yoruban, where the word for no is ra-ra. Ra-ra. <laughs> I can believe that. So I want to pretend the Chooks is from that region and say that yeah. he, he said ra-ra to this yeah. particular uh, subject. The other thing is, look, it took you how long for these guys to gel? Yeah. It took you, and to get comfortable with each other and to trust each other and to stay on the field all the time. And the next thing you're going to do is start shuffling them for no real yeah. reason and for minimal benefit. No. Uh, rah, rah. Okay. Rah, rah. I, I will say that I think that moving Dan Moore to the inside, which does feel like a legit possibility. Yeah. Okay. If you can draft, you're going to draft a left tackle. If you draft a left tackle and you draft him in the first round, dude's going to play. You better believe it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's doggone right. So if Dan goes to the inside, he is, he's going to be a swing guy. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he can be a swing guy. There's money in being a swing guy. There, there is, but this is, you know, quick little uh, pro tip about how the NFL goes. In, in your earlier years, you say the more you can do, the longer you stay around, mm-hmm. right? If I can play guard, if I can play tackle, if I can play right tackle, left tackle, you know what? I'm more valuable. Mm-hmm. But Dan Moore is in that position, especially being, what, a third third rounder? Yep. Third or fourth uh, rounder? Fourth fourth rounder Mm -hmm. uh he's in a position to kind of almost say the more you can do the less you get paid you better specialize in one position yeah that's that's, where he he probably wants to settle in is he a but it's not his call it's not his call it's it's not uh but it also depends on how long your oc gonna end up being there anyway 
And then there's also that. Lots and lots of variables. But with this offensive line and the way they came together, you want to minimize those variables moving forward. You know, yeah, you I don't do. have a problem with Kevin Dotson at left guard. I, I, I don't. I don't either, but it's always that position they're looking to upgrade. I don't know why, DK. And, of course, with his health being in and out of the lineup a little bit, you kind of question that. When are we going to get the full, healthy, strong man, Kevin Dotson? I hear you. I think that kind of, you know, lends itself a a question of, okay, well, do we find this replacement? Not saying that you do, but saying that, hey, you got to keep him on the field. He was banged up, though. He and I talked yeah. about it through the season, and he told me exactly what these things were, and I saw them, and they, they, he wasn't milking them. <laughs> he yeah. was banged up, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I just – I just, I think his potential is there just because of that raw strength and everything. But Dan Moore, yeah, no, we're not switching. We're not switching. <laughs> Let's do this again tomorrow, Moan, all right? Absolutely. All right. All right.